Okay, Odion, good to have you here. I mean, it's always a pleasure to have you. This is the second time, you know, not the first time. But, I mean, you are a twin. Yeah. A lot of people don't know you. You're a twin. <laughs> so, you know, tell us what it is like growing up with your twin sister and all that. So, growing up, just describe it for us. Yeah, a lot of people don't know I'm a twin, but I have a twin sister and um, she's very quiet. She's not a social media type and she's married anyway, so with kids, so she's more focused on family and kids. So that's why you don't get to see her how there. She's not a social media person. But, uh, like you say, I would grow up. Uh, we, grew up we grew up in Ajegula together and um, we lived in the same house. Is like I said, she's my first love mm -hmm. that I brought from heaven. Mm -hmm. So she's very dear to me, and uh, whenever anything is going on with her, I sense it. Whenever anything is going on with me, she senses it. She asks me, and we talk. It's one person in my life that I don't have any secret for. Mm -hmm. She knows about every secret about me, and I know about every secret about her so i love her so much she's my she's my like like i said my first love you know so you're talking about growing up i know what it is like growing up in ajigule i was mm. i grew up just a street away from you you know taiwo street oh really you remember yeah you're from taiwo street, yeah, from taiwo street. <laughs> you know we watched you play street football there yeah, yeah 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 so i know what it is like growing up in Ajigule. Yeah. but we'll come back to that mm. but let's let's talk about your season now mm. uh alilal scored 19 league goals mm. how would you sum up your season for Alila? Well, it's, it was not the best season, but I'm grateful to God. Scored 19 goals and won the, the King's Cup. But like I said, if I want to summarize it, it was not my best season because uh, I know I can do better than that. Mm -hmm. Last season, I won the ISO score out 24 goals, won the league and all that. This season, we didn't win the league. We lost in the Champions League final. And uh, I didn't win the ISO score. I came second just with one goal, I think, or two. So, but thank God we won the King's Cup and, uh, and, we, and we got to the finals for the Club World Cup, which we came second. We lost against Real Madrid. I would say it's not a bad season, but I believe I can still do more or better than that, you know. Okay, so your, your contract is up with Ali Lal. Mm -hmm. um, were you offered a new contract or do you think you, you deserve to be offered a new contract to no, continue? Your no, uh, I have option of uh, signing extra one year, but we didn't okay. agree to, okay. to, to whatever terms and uh, we part ways because that's how football is, you know. So I'm happy I like the biggest club in Asia. I did work the, the great club, great management, great people. So I'm... I'm, I'm really happy to, to have played there almost two years, one and a half years, mm -hmm. I think. So now I'm looking forward to the future. Okay, uh, talking about Saudi Arabia now, I mean, quite a whole lot is happening. You know, the influx mm -hmm. of players yeah. going into the Saudi Premier League. I mean, Ronaldo is there now. You know, lots of players. And it reminds people, it reminds me of when China did their yeah, team, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, pumping out money, bringing players. And you're, you're someone who's played in both leagues. You've played in China, you've played in Saudi Arabia. Mm. What do you think they are doing differently? Do you think Saudi Arabia is going to end up like the Chinese league then when they were pumping in money, signing players? Or do you think Saudi Arabia is doing anything different from what China did a couple of years ago? Well, um, the difference is that you have more foreign players in a team than in China. China, mm. when I was there in China, you can only have four foreign players in a team. Mm. Now it's seven foreign players that can play in a team, and this season I think they want to increase it to to eight foreign players in one team, and the league they are increasing it from sixteen to eighteen teams now. So I think they want to bid for the World Cup, yeah. and they are attracting big stars, bringing big coaches, big stars. If you see what the national team did in in Qatar World Cup, yeah. you know they have prospects. You know they did so well, even though they didn't qualify. They beat Argentina. You can see the way they played. So they want, to, they want to continue from that to keep building. So that's why they are bringing stars, big players, big coach to the league to improve the league and to improve the local players there, you know. But it is what it is. People say the money is too much and all that. Yeah. Saudi Arabia is a rich country, so yeah. 
they can afford it, they can offer it. So why not? So for you, the major difference is, you know, you have more foreign players yeah. in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And, and their World Cup league. Yeah, and the league is more competitive mm. Mm. than in China. It's more tougher, it's more stronger than in China. Okay, um, you know, let's talk about the managers now you've played under. I mean, you've played under so many great managers, so, you know, from the days in England, in Italy, yeah. in Spain, in Saudi Arabia, even with the national team. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have a favorite, like the favorite manager you've, you've worked with? And tell us why, if you pick any. I would say I don't have a favorite because uh, all managers like player that score goals, like yeah. a striker that score goals. So if he does not score goals, the m manager will not like you, won't love you, you know, because you're giving him, you're making him a job look easy you know scoring goals and winning games for him that's why so i think all the managers i've played with i was in good terms with them they are good they are nice to me and all that because i do my job well and i and i appreciate their job so you can't you can't pick just one for us i want to put you on the spot just you want to pick, put me on yeah, the spot one one and, i would and, say and when i bust into limelight i was in premier league mm -hmm. when i scored 16 goals in premier league i played under kike sanchez flores he gave me the opportunity he makes me like being myself and no matter the mistakes and all that he still believe in me because he saw what nobody else saw in me yeah. so he said okay keep going i don't care about the mistake just keep going so pk sanchez flores it is for you yeah okay let's let's switch from managers to players now uh, who are your closest or who is your closest pal when you play for the super Eagles? because i mean having this session we are definitely going to talk about the super Eagles. <laughs> you know so you know, who is closest? Uh, closest I, have I, have, I have lots, lots, lots. Mm. Like yesterday, I was with uh, Kenneth Omeru yesterday. Mm. He came to the house with his wife, who was sitting down and chatting because he was my first roommate in the national team. I was, I'm, I'm very close to him. Ezinwa, I'm I, very I, close I was to going him. to mention <laughs> Ezinwa as well. Because I was in uh, LA with him two weeks ago before I came to Nigeria and all that. I was in America with him. I was close to Ezinwa. In short, I'm, I'm, I'm close to all the players. Victor, Sime, even though we didn't play long together, but the yeah. little time we play, we do chat and all that, you know. So, a couple of them are, are like me. Like I said, I don't have enemies, you know. All of yeah. them are my friends, but when I say those, we hang out and talk a lot. Sometimes John Ogu too in the national team. So, many of them like that. Okay, still with the national team, um, you, you, you officially called it a quit some couple of years ago and uh, you were brought back um i don't know if there's any need for you to officially say again that you've retired because you've not said anything ever since you know it didn't work out for mm -hmm. the super Eagles at the, at the world cup as well so is this something you want to clear the air or because a lot of people still clamor for your return people you know when you score a goal and you post on and your news is on several platforms people say ah, this guy this guy still gave it to you take the for national yeah. team and all that so is this something you want to just clear the air? Uh, well, I don't think about that. You know, like uh, you never can say never. You know, the the last time I announced the retirement, yeah. I feel that maybe I should not have announced it in when I'm ending my football career totally. Yeah, really, yeah. yeah, but now I don't have anything to say than to just continue playing my club football and see how life goes. Okay. Now, um, do you have any regrets with the national team, playing for the national team? You know, when you look back your years with the Super Eagles, is there a moment you would look at and say, okay, this is a bit of a regret for me, you know, playing for, for the national team, like your downtime with the national team? The only downtime I would say is in the, the game against Argentina that mm, mm. I missed, I think, a chance and all that, and the old Nigeria wanted to bury me alive and all that. <laughs> I think that is the only one. And this last yeah. World Cup we did not qualify for, mm. which I believe we have the tools and everything in our position to qualify for that World Cup because we are playing at home, which is advantage to us. We are playing with our fans. You see how the stadium was crowded that day, which is an advantage to us. But due to one circumstances, selfish reason for one or two people, we didn't get to qualify. But that is gone. World Cup is gone. We have to look forward. And I'm happy the team just qualified for the AFCON and the boys did so well. I was here two days ago watching the game and when they equalize, I, I almost want to hit everywhere but thank God we won the game and we, the team qualified for the World Cup. The boys deserve it, you know, you see the young boys doing so well and all yeah. that, playing in that kind of circumstances, that kind of 
uh, pitch, atmosphere. It's not easy, you know. People don't know what some of these guys go through, you know. So imagine people playing in Europe in in what class pitches that you bring them to this kind of it's difficult. It's diff it's difficult. I've been there and I know it is, you know. So I commend them for winning that game and qualifying Nigeria for the AFCON. You know, you know, it's good to see you show you still show passion for for the national team. But if you look at the team now and you know when you were there, or or let's say look at the last AFCON where they got knocked out in the round of sixteen. You know, what are the key obviously there's a new manager now, but yeah. what are the differences you see in the team? Because a lot of our players are actually doing well right now, yeah, especially yeah. in the fourth position. Yeah, yeah. But you know, what are the key differences? You know, in the team then. More, the team. We have more younger boys now and uh, Though they are growing now, it, now it, 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 I think it's much better than the, the last Afcon because then I don't think we have that leader in the team, you understand? But I, I, I can see now we, they are growing up and maturing. Like you see the way Osime is acting on the field, you know, that guy is a leader, you understand? He wants yeah. to fight for everybody, he wants to win the way he, he scream at his, at his player. And, you know, that fighting spirit, that zeal to win, that uh, 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 courage to win, I can see it in him. So he's growing up to become a leader in that team, you understand? So, which I really like, you know. In the past, like the last half come, they don't have that, you understand? But because he did not, he, he didn't went to the, uh, uh, the last half, come, yeah. last half come. I, I was not there, and um, uh, most of the senior player that was there was on the bench, you understand? So it was a, a bit difficult. But now these boys are growing. You see Chukweze doing well, uh, Simon, uh, Aribo, all of them in the middle, uh, uh, Ndidi and all that. And I was happy I saw uh, Kenneth Omero in commanding the defense with Captain, Captain Ban and all that. You know, it's one player that I can stick my life for that. You don't pass him easily, you know. He play with all his mind. He go for everything and all that. So, can see he's a leader too and all that. So I'm happy. Ahmed Musa too is there, though he didn't play the game and all that. But he's a leader in the dress room and all that. But when you say inside the pitch, you know, I see your seamen doing so much and pushing the team from the top and everything. So you know, you you mentioned you know three players that caught my attention: Omero, Musa. We'll come to see him later, but. You know, if you look at Omero and Musa, they are, you know, whenever the squad is being announced, they are the two players that people don't want to see because, like, they, they, they feel they are old. Uh, that makes me, you know, it brings the question, is experience overrated in football? Because, you know, when you call up these people, mm. you say they are bringing experience to the squad. But a lot of people don't buy that. Like, you know, other players can feel their position, that they are taking the slots of younger players who wants to come up. How important is experience in terms of uh, you know, naming the team squad and in football generally? First of all, we all know Nigerians. Even mm -hmm. though you don't invite Omeru and Musa, you invite, they will still complain. Yeah. No list you're going to bring out True. for the national player that one or two people will not say anything about it. So you can't please everybody. But I will tell you experience matters in a team. Yeah. Because these guys you're talking, Musa, they have seen what these young guys have not seen. They had the experience. Like I was talking to Omero yesterday when he was here. I said, Oh, but you guys want to choke us or after that second goal. He said, We are winning 2 0. And we withdraw, we are qualified. He was telling them to calm the game down. Why are you already you want to go, go score? Calm the game down. That's what experience. When you play and you're winning 2 0, why are you rushing to score? These people need to score two goals before they can equalize or even win. So kill the game. Mm -hmm. That's where yeah, because these young boys they they want to score goals, yeah. you know. They want to or they want to play, they want to do well. But the, the the experienced player will tell you, keep the game down. These people are the one who's looking for goals, not for us. Keep the game down, kill the game. He, he said he was telling some of them, kill the game down, you know. So experience is anywhere plays big fa factor. You understand? For example, uh, 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 Portugal want to play Nigeria now. Ronaldo is hold, yeah. But only him being on the pitch, even though he's, he, he, if if he's, if he's not running even one kilometer in the game, it boosts the, player. it boosts the other players. Or Argentina is playing a game now. Messi does not run. Yeah. It, only when it, the boys with him he run. So seeing Messi alone in that pitch, it boosts the team. You understand? It gives them more, the opponent is trembling. 
So that is the experience play good part. You understand? So people think experience. Don't. No, you need those guys there. You need Musa there. You need uh, Omero there. You need one or two experienced players. Even though all of them are not playing, some will be on the bench. Even speaking with the other young ones, you will see. Because you have, for example, 18 young boys. No one have experience. None of them can tell each other what, what have they gone through yeah. with the national team. Musa have been there for long. He have seen the bad, the ugly, the, most corrupt, the yeah. worst in the national team. So he will tell them from his experience. We have to do it this way. This is how we lost this. This is how we... they will list him. Omero is there talking and all that. They will list him. So experience always matters in a team. It always matters. Ronaldo is 38 years old. He's still playing. Yeah. But if my team want to play them today, we try to kill him. What our game against them, we what we do, we kill the person that is going to give him pass. That's it. If Ronaldo does not see boy for straight, does not play. So to show that he's an experienced player, when he has the ball, he will cause damage. So if he doesn't have the ball, he can't do nothing. So we block the person that will give him pass to play. So that's it. Talking about Ronaldo, do you have do you have a, the chance to have a little conversation with him? Uh, you know, just very brief conversation or did you get a chance to speak with him? No, no conversation. It's in, the, in, in the field of play, we just chatted because uh, they had a free kick and all that. He was saying the ball touched. I said, no, he didn't touch my hand. The referee went to check the VAR. I said, if he did not touch the, the other guy's hand, my hand, he, did not, he, he hit my back and all that. So he was saying, no, he got to touch you. And so they were looking for penalty or free kick and all that. So that's the only conversation. All right, you talked about Simen. Now, let's, <coughs> let's focus on Simen. I mean, he, is, he looks up to you. I mean, he doesn't shy away from saying you're one player he looks up to. I mean, he's achieved a lot this season. He scored twice in that game against Liberia. Mm -hmm. Your goal tally stands at 16. Osimhen mm. is now at 17. You know, what, you know, what's the ceiling for Osimhen for you? How, how would you sum up what he's done so far this season? You know, and the way he's going? every morning when I wake up, I pray. I pray that my son should be greater than me in life. Mm. So the same prayer I pray for Osimhen that we are from Edo State, it's like a junior brother to me. So I always wish him all the best. So I even when they were changing him that day, I say I was expecting him to score a trick, you know. Yeah. So when they change him, I said, okay, two goals is enough. So him passing my tally does not mean anything to him because I want him to even do more. He's still young. 24. 24 years and see what he have achieved so far. So this season he did so well when the ISO scorer in the Italian league win the, the league, got to a, a semi-final or quarter-final in the Champions, Champions League. league. Yeah. For his age, he has achieved so much, you know. So my prayer for him is to keep on being humble, continue the way, continue and hopefully one big team come and take him. I mean, we're in the summer, a lot of talks about his next <laughs> move. I, I know you are not serious, <laughs> but yeah. mm -hmm. what's your, I want to put you on the spot, I need you to give me an answer yeah what's your advice what are you advising me i'm a man you i'm a man you for life till death so my advice is for him to go to manchester united because man united need mm. that hungry player like osime osime is hungry for goals he's a fighter he chased the defender he bullied the defender he's good on the hair he's young you know yeah so and that's what Man United need. So for me, my advice, if I can advise him, you know, because he has his agent, he has people, and he has mm. his own mind because he's not a kid anymore. But as we are talking here, my own advice is for him to go to Man United because Man United need that kind of player, you know. And he will do well in England. You know, Man United will get the best out of him because young boy, as if they give him like five years, six years contract, before that five years, six years, you'll see what he will achieve. Because I've been, been in Manchester United and yeah. I know IT, so I believe it's a club that, that will suit him and he will, he will achieve a lot there. And he's not going to come cheap. He's not going to come cheap. Of course, cheap. of course. Osime is one of the, the most costly, uh, costly player now in the market. Yeah. Because you see that kind of young player with his age, he's just 24, and achieving or doing all what he's doing now, anything that buys him, we 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 make their money from him because you're going to use this boy from at the age of 20, 24 to his 30s so he will give you the best of his year because he has not started 
It's just 24. Imagine 20, 25, 26, 27. That is the best years of any young player's football career from 25 to the 30 year. That is before you said, okay, start slowing the down. Prime years, yeah, yeah. The, pr the prime years is now to 30 year. So anything that buys him now, we're going to use him very well and it's going to deliver. Okay, uh, Igalo, let's, let's wind up on this conversation now. Um, let's talk about the Nigerian League now. You're one of the few players who, you know, didn't get to play much in Nigeria, mm -hmm. if, you know, from you travel to Norway and all that. You know, in the past few years, what can you say about the Nigerian Premier League? And, uh, you know, what's your observation about the league? And how do you think the league can improve? My observation is... We still need, like, investors in the league. Mm -hmm. We need good coverage. We need good referees. Because without that, the league cannot be standard. We can do better because there's money in this country. You know, if each businessman can sponsor one team, okay, for this one year, I want to sponsor that team and... It will get better. I just believe that we have too much talent. We have to grow the league, you know. Look, yeah. South Africa League. People are going there to play. Look, in Morocco, in Egypt, in Tunisia, all these leagues. They don't have better players than Nigeria, but their league is well organized. So we just need to organize our league. And you see top players will be going from our league to big clubs outside. From direct from this league to big club because we have talent in the league. Okay, so um, you know it's been it's been good in the last couple of months. We saw the Super Six; it was televised on, in Super Sport uh, and all that. So we hope that improvement will carry on to next season. But uh, Igalo, the Nigerian Premier League is it is this something you do consider at some point in your career? Maybe play one season, play a few months in the Nigerian Premier. League. We saw I mean, Musa did that we kind of yeah. from a couple of years ago. Is this something you would you would consider? Or you'd like like to I do? said, if security is guaranteed, <laughs> if good coverage is guaranteed, and uh, 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 um. Uh, uh, good referees, of course. I played the league before, and it would be a great privilege for me to play for six months or one year before I finish my career. But you, 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 you don't want to be playing and be getting scared of your life or what is going to happen next yeah. and all that. So it, it does not worth it, you know. So if I even want to play, I'm not going to play because I want to make money because I'm not even going to take money from no team. You know, understand? Mm, yeah. I'll just play because I want to fulfill something you know but first of all i have to make sure all these things i said is being put in place for me to say okay i want to do it you understand so all right we hope for more improvements in the league uh, finally igalo before i let you go uh it's the off season the yeah. summer transfer window uh what what's cooking what what's, what next for you there's there's, what a, next for you? there's a lot yeah. cooking i'm just waiting to see what's the best option you know like i said i spoke to my agent yesterday he told me some things and all that you know Hopefully, before a week or two, I will get more idea of what is going on. But like I said, I have things on ground just for me to just pick and say, okay, this is what I want. This is where I want to go. This is what I want to do. So that's it. All right, Galo, thank you so much for this uh, beautiful time. It's a pleasure. I always wanted to do this. Yeah. Uh, finally, I get to do it. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. You Good so to much. see you. Man. All right. Thank you. You are listening to Elegbete TV Radio.